Well, uh, John just put a lot of pressure on me because, you know, I'm the last guy between the bar and my presentation. <laughs> well, uh, indeed, it's a uh, privilege uh, and an honor for me to have the opportunity uh, to speak uh, to you today. Uh, John uh, did an office call with me, uh, must have been about three, four months ago, and I said, hey, John, I want to get more involved in the uh, Bay Planning uh, Coalition because I believe what you all do uh, for the Bay Area is uh, very important. And I say, if you give me three months notice, I guarantee you I could make it. And uh, that almost got at risk. But I got in from Washington, D.C. at 1130 last night just so I can be here. So I really am uh, greatly appreciative uh, to uh, John Combe and his leadership, as well as the uh, president, uh, Scott Warner. And how apropos, as I look uh, to my right shoulder and I see the uh, Bay Planning Coalition has been going on for about 30 years. And when I look back at my service to the nation of active duty service, it's been 30 years. So as I reflect on my service, I can only imagine some of the great things and uh, what the Bay Planning Coalition uh, has meant uh, to the Bay Area. And so to each and every one of you all, all the speakers, I've had a chance to uh, uh, listen to you. I've taken great risk. I have not checked a single BlackBerry email message since I've been here because I wanted to really have an opportunity to uh, listen uh, to your issues and uh, really I was really happy to hear some of those other questions because what John told me he said hey no double jeopardy so if a question was already asked once it can't be asked again. <laughs> well uh, before I get started what I would like to do is just really uh, show you uh, some of what the core visionary is what we do from a national perspective uh, Lieutenant General Bostic, the Chief of Engineers, he has really four uh, campaign plan goals, and I'll talk to those goals briefly. Uh, support the warfighter, transform civil works, reduce disaster risk, and prepare for tomorrow. So uh, with this video, uh, really led by Steve Stockton, Ms. many of you all know Steve uh, Stockton. He has uh, put a lot of tremendous uh, energy and a lot of initiatives in the uh, Bay Area as well as the, uh, the region here. So. Uh, if we can go ahead and pull the video up, I would appreciate it. As uh, John uh, mentioned, uh, I'll be uh, departing soon, uh, and it's definitely bittersweet. But uh, with me today, I have uh, Lieutenant Colonel uh, John Baker, who uh, commands the uh, uh, San Francisco District. And I just want to personally say it's been a privilege and an honor for me to have uh, the opportunity uh, to serve uh, with Lieutenant Colonel Baker. He's heading to the Pentagon. I've had uh, four assignments in the Pentagon. I do not want another assignment in the Pentagon. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, let's give uh, John a round of applause and wish him farewell. <laughs> and uh, hopefully my assignment officer heard my plea. But I'm also uh, fortunate to have uh, Colonel Mike Farrell in uh, Sacramento District. Uh, Colonel Kim Cullerton, who uh, commands the Los Angeles District, and uh, Tony uh, Gant, uh, Lieutenant Colonel, who commands Albuquerque. And uh, Tony, too, should be going to the Pentagon, and she's going to be the uh, uh, military assistant uh, for the Secretary of uh, Civil Works. So I'm uh, both extremely proud of both uh, John and Tony and wish them uh, fair winds and following seas as they take their assignment in the Pentagon. It, it's really good for me to be here. Where's, where's Monique? Is she here? Uh, you know, Monique said something that was really intriguing to me because I heard a lot of great discussions today about aging infrastructure and about climate change. She said something, a floodgate in the Bay Area. And I would tell you, if we can figure that out, then the solutions to climate change would be pretty simple. If you understand the hydrology of uh, the, uh, the Bay, just what, what an amazing uh, uh, water resource we have here. Uh, me growing up in St. Louis uh, on the Mississippi River, once I crossed the Rocky Mountains to the Arab West, I really did uh, get a great appreciation of the many challenges uh, that you face uh, here in the, uh, in the uh, Bay Area. I am very pleased uh, to say that the House and the Senate yesterday filed water, uh, so hopefully that's going to get passed here in 2014. There's a lot of uh, great projects and a lot of uh, great initiative. Uh, some of those initiatives uh, Congress Garmini uh, spoke to uh, on today, and it was really a privilege for me to be with uh, uh, Congressman Garmini when I did my uh, congressional visits, and uh, he had his staff come in and said, he said, wait a minute, 
because they were trying to get him to move to his next session. He goes, I've got a core general here, and I'm going to pin him down as long as I can. But we really did have a, a great session. I, I told uh, Congressman Garmin, I was share that story with you all today. Uh, I mean, the core is really active in a lot of things. Uh, some of those uh, pieces you saw in one of our uh, USAID's campaign plan goals, which is transform civil works. As I stated, support the warfighter. Uh, right now, we really have uh, about 25 of our South Division personnel uh, deployed to Afghanistan, uh, supporting uh, those warfighter efforts. I'll talk more in detail on Transform Civil Works. Uh, respond to our uh, disasters is one of our key missions. Recently, I've had an opportunity to meet with Tony Russell, uh, FEMA Region 6 Director, and also Karen Arms, uh, FEMA Region 9. Director, really kind of walking through uh, what the USAID's uh, responsibilities are uh, based on the authorities given to us uh, by uh, Congress. And one of the things we're really uh, focusing on uh, here in the region is the drought. Uh, we understand uh, the importance of us as a federal agency. I had a chance to uh, meet with uh, Mark Garducci, and what he told me was here in California, every drop of water counts. And, uh, you know, some of the things we've done, uh, I mean, we have our authorities on the public law 8499, which basically allows us to haul water and uh, uh, drill wells on a reimbursable basis. But in some unique circumstances, uh, Los Angeles District, uh, Colonel uh, Kim Colton said, hey, can we hold water uh, a little bit longer during the upcoming storm? And we were able to do that, and we were able to capture uh, 22,000 uh, acre feet of water, which, you know, really uh, relates to about 18 million to 30 million uh, dollars. So I was happy uh, we were able to uh, contribute in that fashion. Also, uh, Lieutenant Colonel John Baker and his staff, they put in a barrier with a pump at Coyote Dam. So if the reservoir does get low, it will allow this barge that has this pump to pump out the water in cases where the uh, the dam uh, would not normally be able to do that. So we are trying to be uh, active uh, partners and part of the solution uh, as we address the drought issues. And also prepare for tomorrow. It's important for the Corps to keep their engineering scientists with their credentials, their certifications. So we put a lot of emphasis on that as well. It's each of the districts that I spoke about uh, put tremendous emphasis on the STEM uh, across our region. Uh, next slide. Uh, these are some of the, uh, the challenges that uh, we face, uh, none of these are, are foreign uh, to any of us here. And so uh, as we you know, work towards solutions, be it climate change, uh, be it age and infrastructure, you know, these are just many of the different pillars uh, that we have to work our way through. Uh, can you back up? Okay, okay this, this slide here I'll talk to, uh, it kind of got a little bit ahead of me. I mean, you can really see some of the uh, context, some of the, the uh, footprint. Uh, 12,000 miles of uh, commercial inland and waterways to core operates. 926 shallow and deep draft dams. Uh, this region does the 27 uh, shallow and deep uh, harbors here in uh, California. You can see total 12,000 miles of levee. We manage about 2,286 uh, miles of levee. Really a lot of uh, our systems are up uh, in the uh, Sacramento area as well. Okay, next slide. Okay, I, I did speak to this, so I'll, I'll move on. Uh, what I'd like to do is go to the next slide. And this is, uh, this is intriguing. Who knows what that picture is? Anybody want to take it? I'll give you a hint. This is the, uh, the first uh, publication of Life magazine. It was published November 23rd, 1936. And uh, anybody want to? Well, basically, this is uh, Fort Peck Dam, a multi-billion dollar project, highest of all dams along the um, Missouri River. So it's just, to me, it's very intriguing that Life magazine uh, found it important to put a dam as their first publication. Uh, what, what a vision uh, uh, that is. A watershed approach is nothing new. Uh, neglected waterways, demands, and hydropower throughout this country and calls for irrigation projects in the area west to attention to the natural water resources at the beginning of the uh, 20th century. So really, we're looking at 
uh, multi-purpose ways to uh, solve uh, some of the water challenges here in, in the West. And I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later. The yeah, majority of the U.S. infrastructure was uh, built between 1920s and the 1980s. So uh, that infrastructure is, is aging. Uh, we talked about uh, climate change. And I think Mike from Redwood City, if you can uh, raise your hand, had an opportunity to visit Mike in our Redwood City. I was just intrigued at the uh, port they put in. They accommodated for climate change. They raised it uh, two feet. And just, you know, people take initiative, uh, just like everyone here uh, in this room. And really, it's not what can the federal government contribute, what can the state, local government. It's really what can we all contribute to solving our nation's uh, infrastructure, aging infrastructure challenges. Uh, next slide. In our 2006, the American Society of Engineers gave uh, America's infrastructure a grade of uh, D. In 2001, it was, it, you know, we did increase. It moved to a D plus, but still, it shows we have a, a long way to go. Uh, China spends about 7% of its gross domestic product on infrastructure. India, about 5%. Uh, we spend less than uh, 2%. And so, uh, clearly, we have... Uh, uh, ways to go collectively uh, as we uh, solve our nation's uh, aging uh, infrastructure challenges. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, Public Law 8499, most of y'all are very familiar with this. Uh, it, a lot of it uh, associated with uh, the levy systems. Uh, headquarters, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, I mean, they, they listened to your concerns. And so what they did is they came out with some interim guidance that, that basically says, because your levy has vegetation, it does not make your levy ineligible uh, for public assistance. But vegetation still remains a requirement. It just doesn't kick you out of the program. So we're going to come out with some final policy, but uh, the agency did uh, adjust its policy. And a lot of reasons it did that. It was listed some of your concerns, uh, specifically some of the concerns that were raised here in California. Okay, most of y'all are probably, uh, next slide please, aware uh, of the uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and EPA uh, proposed rule change, uh, which uh, went out for public comment period. Uh, and, and that uh, comment concludes uh, July 21st. The intent is to provide additional clarity, transparency, efficiency, and will improve consistencies and predictability for all Clean Water Act programs. You know, I, I tell people, I am a regulator, and I get regulated. And so I, I live on both sides of the world, and I understand the uh, complexities of, of you know, our 404 permitting process. In fact, I hosted a uh, regulatory summit uh, back in February because I wanted to have the opportunity uh, to hear from the public some of their concerns reference our uh, 404 permitting process. The uh, proposed rule uh, has seven major categories. Uh, six of the categories are jurisdictional, and uh, one of the categories would really, you know, be based on significant uh, nexus. Uh, again, I said the uh, public comment period uh, ends on 21 July 2014, so if you have any comments or concerns, uh, please uh, use that venue uh, to address uh, those concerns. Next. Okay, civil works transformation. Uh, let me kind of drill down. Really, this is a decision makers conference, and so what I want to try to do is talk to you on how the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers or the Corps uh, goes through some of its uh, decision making process. Uh, what drives that is based on uh, uh, limited resources of today's fiscal constraint. Uh, USAIS is looking to maximize uh, the federal investment, uh, produce better, justified solutions faster with reliable quality through planning modernization. And that planning modernization is our three by three by three, which uh, essentially means we're going to finish study in three years. Uh, it's going to be done for $3 million, and we're going to get vertical agreement. That's Lieutenant Colonel John Baker, myself, and the Chief of Engineers, uh, Lieutenant General Bostic, who ultimately signs uh, the Chief's report. Uh, so we're excited that, you know, that has potential uh, to be in the water, and once it's signed and put into law, uh, will be postured to continue to do the great things that uh, uh, we are trying to do as we meet your, your needs. Build justifiable and sustainable civil works budget utilizing a system-based watershed approach. And, and essentially, 
when it comes to uh, levies, flood risk management, we really drive a lot of decisions based on the national uh, economic development. You know, what kind of benefits are going to be garnered out of this levy system drives a lot of the investment decision. Likewise, with our ecosystem restoration uh, projects, the uh, national economic uh, restoration benefits drive a lot of our decision making when it comes to those ecosystem uh, restoration projects. Just like the, the great project that was completed here recently in uh, Hamilton, where we use a lot of the dredge materials out of the uh, San Francisco Bay. When you look at getting additional benefits, one of the projects I want to highlight, even though it was spoken to earlier, is, is the great work we have done with the uh, Borough Reclamation, uh, two state agencies, really addressing both flood risks and water conservation, which will increase the capacity to uh, provide water by allowing us to release water at lower elevations and also improve uh, and make the, uh, the dam more resilient. And so what I want to do here is, is pause and, and take any questions, but indeed it's been a privilege uh, and an honor for me to have the opportunity to address you. And I would really miss this region. In fact, I got a, one of these little congratulatory note cards from uh, uh, Lieutenant General Talley, who commands our reserves. And he says, hey, congratulations for being selected to go command the South Atlantic Division, which is headquarters out of Atlanta. So I wrote him back, and I said, hey, sir, you know, thank you for wishing me well. I am looking forward to taking command of the South Pacific Division. And so my secretary said, hey, do you realize you said you're going to take command of your same division? So it shows my heart, my thoughts are still here in San Francisco. And so it's going to... I'm going to sorely miss all the many friends that I have made uh, during my really too short of a tenure here. I was hoping to be here for uh, at least uh, two years, but unfortunately, uh, I don't control that. But I am fortunate because it could be worse. I could be going to the Pentagon, correct? <laughs> so uh, now, if I can warn you, I mean, I noticed that when uh, Larry, who, who's been a great friend of mine as well, and I've had an opportunity to meet, this microphone had a chance to go down to like five people when questions were asked, so they had a lot of depth up here. And so uh, hopefully I can uh, you know, answer any questions. If not, I'll take a note uh, and I'll get back with you. But again, it's just been so great for me to have the opportunity uh, to speak to each and every one of you all. Thank you so very much. Okay, here comes the cards. <laughs> Ellen, go ahead and see Ellen, you have a question. And Ellen, it's great to see you. Uh, Ellen and I, we've met a couple of times, you know, working, you know, some really uh, complex challenges on the Bay to Stockton uh, study, uh, as well as, uh, you know, Lieutenant Colonel Baker and his team, they, are, they have really pushed the envelope to the San Francisco uh, shoreline. I believe we have, remember I talked about the vertical agency, district, region, uh, headquarters, you say it's, agreement to uh, take the San Francisco shoreline study and really address in the design some of the climate uh, changes that really a lot of us have been speaking to uh, on today. But I didn't mean to uh, steal your thunder. So do you still have a question? Okay, next question. No. <laughs> of my question. Yes. Okay. So that's the context of my, of my question. Marrying up beneficial reuse of dredge material with South Bay Salt Pond restoration uh, goals. And I'm, I'm considering, want to dig in deeper to the word of provision that looks like the federal standard on a navigation project, which is least cost uh, environmentally acceptable project. That's a, the federal standard that, the, that might be given some more flexibility if an ecosystem restoration project such as delivering dredge material to, let's say, a levee, such as over at Eden Landing, uh, could be the benefits from that could be counted in that um, uh, discussion in, in looking at benefits to the navigation project 
of, let's say, Redwood uh, City Harbor. So is that too much of a uh, complication? But the idea is, uh, can we, are we able to look at benefits from an ecosystem restoration project in the utilization of beneficial reuse uh, of dredge material? Is Absolutely. Again, and what opportunities do we have more and, and I would tell you, to help I, this us? This is a great question because uh, Colonel John Baker and I have had discussions uh, on this uh, in the past. And, and if you can recall uh, what I said earlier, we're looking uh, to maximize uh, the benefits. Uh, but let me, let me address something you said uh, because, you know, I do try to listen. And you said the federal government, you know, takes the, uh, the least cost. And, you know, I, I'm not going to argue that. I mean, we're really looking at, you know, the best use of federal investment. But one of the other points I want to make, there are other opportunities like uh, anyone can do a locally preferred plan above the NEDR, NER, uh, if you want to bring in uh, additional benefits. So I just wanted to make that point. But I think what you're saying is very important. And I think there are opportunities uh, because if we could take the dress material and let's say put it someplace else, if we can get, you know, through the regulatory process, as opposed to taking it 50 miles offshore. I mean, you're going to get tremendous savings out of that, and, and those benefits are going to support uh, the decision. Uh, uh, General, we're going to miss you, and uh, we're going to come down to Atlanta to visit you and bring all those unsolved problems from San Francisco to haunt you. But when you first arrived here, sir, last summer, you addressed this organization at Sinbad's restaurant. I remember that. And we, sir, greeted you with a victory in the final race of the America's Cup right outside. I recall. What does Atlanta have a plan for you, sir, to match that? Well, I, I would tell you, uh, what I tell people is uh, I've been in over uh, 40 countries, uh, had an opportunity to participate in Desert Storm, Iraq, Afghanistan, Bosnia, I've been every state but two, and, and this is the best of the best. So, uh, you know, Atlanta's going to really uh, have a tough time. Uh, I, have, I have, you know, you know, truly fallen in love with the Bay Area. You know, a boy grew up on the Mississippi. You know, the Mississippi River, it just sucks. I mean, it's got the Missouri. No, no, listen to me. It's got the Missouri River suckered into. It's got the Ohio. It's got the Tennessee, the Cumberland, the Red River. I mean, the Mississippi River gets so much. And, and here, you know, we just, you know, as it was stated earlier, uh, you know, we allow a lot of times the Sierra. And as that snow rises, you know, the challenges here uh, in the West are, are, are so unique. And it really takes organizations like the Bay Planning uh, Coalition and BCDC and all the, I was just down in Aqua last uh, week in Monterey speaking to them. All these kind of organizations really, you know, working together, uh, coming up with solutions because no one has the answer to some of the complex uh, challenges that we're faced with. We like to go California, but we will miss you. I have a question here. With limited funds, how do we improve the collaboration between UC's projects and private company needs that are adjacent to uh, core areas of responsibility? Great question. Uh, some of the things we're trying to do is things called alternative financing, uh, private partnership uh, agreements uh, to close uh, some of the, uh, the funding gap. We did very well here in the region. Uh, initially, we had roughly $317 million in the uh, president's budget, but then we got about $449 million in the work plan. So that allowed us to place additional resources in, uh, in uh, needed areas like, you know, Redwood City and other places. I came down and I spoke with uh, uh, Mike, and, you know, he was expressing some of his concerns. But not just Redwood City, but so many other places we were able to address some of those funding shortfalls because of the work plan. That's not a guarantee that future years are going to you know, afford us those kind of opportunities. So what we've got to do is be creative, uh, looking at ways. So for an example, if we can figure out you know, how to hold more water and that water district buys that water and then they do some type of uh, maintenance on our dams, that collaborative effort, we're trying to look at being creative and, and we're willing to take those kind of risks. Excellent. Are there any other questions? 
If not, please give General Turner not only a big thank you for this, but all his service to the country and to our area. And, and I'm going to uh, deeply uh, miss John. When I first met John, I mean, we have a lot of common things. You know, my father's name is Lafayette. He was born in Lafayette, uh, California. Uh, we're both Eagle Scouts, and so uh, it's just, uh, you know, I'm going to miss uh, serving uh, with you, and I, I wish the uh, Bay Plain Coalition all the best. Great. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. With that, we're about ready to close out uh, this program today, our 27th Annual Decision Makers Conference. Again, without the sponsors and you, the attendees, we would not have been able to do what we've done today, as well as all the speakers and panelists. Um, the PowerPoints that you did see up on the video uh, earlier will be next week on our website, so you can access all of them there. As well, the video, which we've been uh, filming this today, as soon as that is up and running, we will let you know so you can get that information as well. Again, um, I don't know, I don't remember who won the SFO private tour, but we have your envelope over there. Scott Warner has it, so don't leave without it. And we're going to meet after this if you'd like to join us at the Lake Chateau, Lake Chateau uh, across the street, if it's uh, over there to socialize. Again, we will be holding June 11th a briefing on uh, fuels for transportation, looking at LNG, CNG, the Coast Guard has agreed to participate, as well as the oil industry and those who are the producers of LNG and CNG. It's a new, tech, it's a new, it's a new but controversial in some quarters uh, it's the fuel to bring into an urban area, but it's also the wave of the future. And then a lot of what we talked about with energy and water. September 5th in San Francisco at the auditorium at PG&E. We'll be holding an all-day workshop on that. And we've invited Senator Feinstein and Governor Brown. And we'll be at the tail end of the drought, we hope. And there'll be a bond election in November, so it'll be very timely with what we'll be talking about. And then John Englander, who gave a wonderful presentation today on sea level rise and put it in a, a different perspective, I think, than a lot of us have heard about. We will be collaborating with John to do a several hour dialogue, briefing, and uh, we have uh, Monique offered the port as a facility and stuff as did, did Oracle, but we'll ha get it tied down and we'll make sure that you're invited to it. It should be a good way for us to have that dialogue in terms of what we're doing, how we're planning, and what the future holds. Again, thank you all for coming today. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you down the road. Thank you and have a safe drive.